house and you're visiting my home on 801 Valley Road in Newark, Delaware. Uh, we have quite a few sculptures as you can see out on the property and they've been, many of them have traveled and been many places. This one in particular was at Madison Square Park in New York for quite a while, several months. And at that time it got a uh, review in the Village Voice for being a, a, a piece of music or providing music as well as sculptural experience. Con Edison, the power company in New York, furnished me a crane. And they were in there at six in the morning to meet me and my crew. And I had about eight guys and we uh, uh, at 11 o'clock, he just shut the crane down, and we hadn't, there was another piece to put up, I think. And I said, gee, what are you doing? He said, it's my lunchtime. And I said, but we, we're not quite finished, and couldn't we go ahead and finish it? And he said, I said, if I didn't know you were going to quit now, we'd have worked faster. And he said, oh my God, he said, I've never seen a crew work as fast as your crew. It's the best crew I've ever seen. And you know, eight months later, he came in to that park when I needed the crane again. The same guy showed up. I said, you're back. And he said, I would not have missed seeing your men work. I heard you were coming to town and I just had to see him work again. So how long was this piece in New York? I think it's about eight months. It was put up the hottest day in the summer and the coldest day in the winter. I remember that. Uh, it's Chant. And I was represented by Max Hutchinson Gallery. Mm -hmm. He's the one who arranged for it to be there. And a little hint mm -hmm. for the spectators. How is this? 1980. Okay. And is this like the best place for the acoustics right here on this plaque, or is this just? Oh, I like the variations. The of variations. Mm -hmm, different places. They're parabolically shaped, and is here in the middle. You traveled back and forth and the sound shifted. Same thing is happening now. If you notice that the sound gets looser and rattles over there. But this also, you are right now in Maryland and I'm in Delaware. This is the state line, Mason-Dixon line. The piece that we're approaching right here, you asked me about how I build these things and it's interesting that when I bought this, these two discs, I thought they were rusted steel because they were dirty in mud. Mm -hmm. So they were something that was an overrun on something. So anyway, when I started cleaning them up, it turned out it had stainless on the face. So it's set up so that we get the sun till noon on this side, and then it goes to the other side. And I like to mow my fields when the light is, uh, say a red kind of sunset on the other side and then every time I go around I can look at the color. Well you get the blue sky if you move over here and so forth but um, it changes in light all day long. Mm -hmm. It does have a, a bit of a sound effect if you're in the focus of it because it has a very close focus. And when I was a kid I didn't have a lot of toys, so I made some. <laughs> and um, this one you can reach better, but it's the old seashell idea, you know, that I played with. <laughs> yeah. uh, I played with a roll that carpet came on mm -hmm. when I was a kid. I wore that piece of cardboard out <laughs> playing with it and making things out of it. Yeah, we'll go what in. Happens? This is a one person piece. One so were you doing work on sound and things? And yeah, I was doing things? work on sounds and Kepish. I went up to see what they were doing at MIT mm -hmm. uh, because there was a book out, Arts of the Environment, that interested me. So, oh, I hear it. Mm-hmm. You can hear a little echoey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's to focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. Oh, yeah, this one was also at MIT. Uh, it's in front of the Kresge building, um, and it was 
for a Sky Art Conference that was there. It was people doing everything from balloons and oh, I, well, one friend put a piece in space on the shuttle, Lowry Burgess. <laughs> so anyway, at MIT we played we did things that usually don't get done. And what um, what did you do at MIT? I was a research fellow there. Oh, okay. First in 73, I was invited there by Yuri Kepish, who started the center. And later, when he stepped down, Otto Pina uh, took over the center. And now it's been pretty well uh, uh, <laughs> absorbed into, well, the Artificial Intelligence Center and so forth. I enjoyed working with him. Mm -hmm. So I, he invited me up to the center to the, that summer. and I. I couldn't leave my research here at the university because that's why I came here. They, mm -hmm. The university here was giving me studio space and funding my research. And okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this piece. Well. Oh, do your pieces have titles? Well, yeah. <laughs> this one we call a retina because my wife had a torn retina at the time we did it. Oh. It's kind of fun. If I, you want to do that sure. for me, please? You hear it bounce off that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh? Sounds like it's. Yeah, it back sounds there. like it's in there. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a gunshot almost. But so anyway, it's partially all the visual effects of the holes. Mm -hmm. Some people say, "Does it? Why doesn't the sound leak through it?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. It does, that percentage that's missing, mm -hmm. but that's not enough to, 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 to lose, it, lose the sound, yeah. So it's so. the mass and then the shape mm -hmm. that creates the echo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is simply a, an end off of a tank. You know, uh, mm -hmm. if you have uh, storage tanks, right. I buy them according to the dimensions I want and the curvature I want, and then have them shipped in. So I, people ask me how I do this, I don't. I mean, I don't shape it. Okay. Cut holes in them, mm -hmm. divide them up, and put them in different directions. But it comes in that shape? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's one over there. And, and where, where do you get these materials? I, let's see, well, from steel fabricators. Okay. All right, this piece, if it's seen from various directions, is very optical, as you've noticed. And uh, it's recently been sold and will be moving from here. And when I move it, I think I'm going to put it on a pedestal that you can rotate the piece so that different days in its location it will be have different vantage points that you pass by. And I think it would be interesting to give them different experiences on different days. So anyway, uh, these are just some of the things that I have here and there'll probably be more. All right, thanks for coming everybody. See you soon, I hope.